In 1788, the land on the southern shore of the Detroit River was established as the village of Sandwich. Over the years, it was the setting of many significant battles, most notably the War of 1812, which confirmed its significance in our political and military history. Much of Windsor and even Canada's history can be traced back to Sandwich Town in what is now the oldest neighborhood in the city of Windsor. As someone who is very passionate about local history, I was very excited to hear of the work being done to uncover the rich military heritage that is hidden throughout the streets of Sandwich Town. My name is Peter Berry. I'm the Harbour Master with the Windsor Port Authority. I first got involved with St. John's Anglican Church here in Sandwich uh, about three, four years ago, and it started to help to cut the grass. Peter was the best piece of luck I've ever had. My name is Larry McLaren, and I'm the current uh, warden of this church. He came and, and wanted to help in the churchyard. He's been my friend ever since. What I found when I came to the cemetery was that there were veterans here that I had no idea. The military heritage in this community is fairly significant. My name is Bill Jones and uh, I am the uh, caretaker for the cemetery. Ridgewood was founded in 1796. The Ridgewood building was built in 1804. This church itself was burned in 1813 by U.S. forces, then rebuilt. The veterans in this cemetery are from multiple wars. Again, going back to the Seven Years' War, Revolutionary War, the War of 1812, Crimean, the Battle of Waterloo. There's actual veteran that was there at the surrender of Napoleon. We go to the Patriots' War of 1838, Upper Canada Rebellion, the Boer War, you get into First World War, then you have Second World War in Korea. And much of the conflict that happened in this area in the, in the late 1700s and early 1800s were buckskin militia. These were men who were called from their farms to grab their muskets and put on their sash and head out and, and fight for their lives and fight for their farms here in this community. It's not just the veterans, it's the history and the heritage that's here that made this community, and they're buried here. For, from my point of view, the more recognition that those veterans get for sacrificing their, their lives or you know, putting their lives on the line for us. I mean, that's why we've got a democracy today. I don't think enough people are interested in history, any, history anymore. I don't think they realize how important it is, uh, you know, to, uh, to the community and to our backgrounds. Uh, like Peter was saying, you know, all the history that's out here in the, in the cemetery. From veterans to political leaders to the first families of Sandwich, but identifying them all can be challenging, especially when it comes to the veterans. Those who died before 1867 were never recognized as Canadian vets. Some lay beneath tombstones that don't identify them as veterans, and many stones are so old and simply too worn out to read. The conditions of the headstones vary. We have ones that are, are modern and recent, we have ones that are very, very old, over 200 years old, and some of those are in pretty bad shape. If we can fix them, we do. I mean, there's always going to be a few that have fallen over. It's sandstone. A lot of the, the older ones are sandstone, and they get kind of obliterated after a while. Interesting, our oldest veteran grave would be our missing veteran, which would be Commodore Grant. So he goes back to the Revolutionary War and the Seven Years' War. Those veterans that are here, those graves have been lost to time. They're still here. We know they're here from the burial rolls, but finding those graves, uh, very difficult. We have all the records from back to 1802. Uh, we have uh, all the maps as far as the, uh, the cemetery is concerned, where all the grave sites are. Right now, our research is the burial rolls and what people know and remember, such as Bill Jones. What he remembers is the history. We need to get that history to paper. Uh, Peter wants to get me in here with a tape recorder and walk around and tell them all the story. A lot of the people in here were, were friends of ours. Uh, 
They uh, were neighbors of ours. Um, I lived on Queen Street during the war. We lost uh, five young men in our city block uh, and were killed during the war. And uh, But a lot of the names, I, I fortunately have a very good memory. So a lot of the names uh, I can tell stories about because of being with them in their houses and that sort of thing. So. We've worked very closely with various organizations in this area, not only with Larry and Bill, who are part of this church, but also with New Beginnings, has been a constant supporter of this. Uh, the local volunteer, uh, Michelle Edmond, who has been invaluable and, and a, a stalwart supporter coming out and cutting the grass. And however, grass grows every week, constantly. The weeds grow constantly. It's, uh, there's five and a half acres here. It looks like people drive by on Sandwich Street and they figure this is the cemetery. The cemetery goes all the way down to Peter Street and it goes for a block and a half along Peter Street. So it's, uh, it's, it's a lot of main, lots to maintain. With the information we're collecting, what we hope to do is put together a book so that people can purchase the book that would help provide for the maintenance and the upkeep of this church, but also give the story of this area. The heritage that's here once you understand the people. Now it's, it's a, a project of mine to stay involved, to help to maintain, and to help expose the history that is Windsor, that is Sandwich. It's all here. When all is said and done, Peter will have created more than just a book. He will have brought to light the significant role Sandwich has played in shaping Canada's history. By identifying the veterans, we will be able to recognize and pay our respects to all those in the cemetery at St. John's Anglican Church in Sandwichtown.